All right, let's go. Chat, this is why we're here. This is why we're here. They timed it perfectly. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Like many of you, I've been playing games as long as I can remember. They're a core part <laughs> of what makes me Yeah, true, right? I am. They, they didn't schedule it at all. Deeply rooted, often unstated mission of games to keep adventure alive. In 2014, Bungie set out to start a new adventure. Heroes awakened on a desolate planet. A Alrighty. silent god set in our sky. And it wouldn't be long before an ancient enemy shrouded in darkness showed up at humanity's door to destroy us. Over the years, our heroes would shape a story. Bro, imagine sitting in that room. Anything we could have imagined. That's gonna be confusing, bro. Into the depths of Venus, hunting a machine god that controlled time itself. They'd invent ways to Vault of glass. their mythic weaponry and their paracausal abilities to stand alone against monsters that took others an entire elite squad. <laughs> Looks like a young run <laughs> Alongside their friends, far into the early morning, in the halls of an ancient city, were only a far yeah into the early morning that's pretty accurate that's actually pretty accurate of a dragon but most importantly they bring their friends and their family into this world and together meet new faces on this adventure true become lifelong companions now together we approach the final shape we're about to embark on the last expedition of destiny's first saga there's two more so first saga the in the final shape you will go inside the traveler the journey will be difficult <laughs> and what a way what? <laughs> nothing less than the deadliest entity we have ever faced there will be no open betas there aren't going to be any guides on the internet telling you how to handle what's to come whether you've been with us from the beginning Joined us somewhere along the road. Oh my soul! Destiny for the first time. Anybody who shows up on launch day is going to be greeted with this same uncharted world, a vacuum sealed experience. Begging Inside for you to the traveler. Feel it open. So Bro, is your invitation to go forth? Why not have to buy the expansions? <laughs> Inside the freaking traveler, dude. After all these years, we never talked about it. We're going to be able to go inside the Traveler in the final shape, bro. I brought you back. Oh. Why you were chosen. Bro, this is going to be sick. Truth is, I didn't know then. Gally, it was just a feeling. <sighs> Jump puzzles, bro. Ooh. Hey. All we've lost. Wait. This fight. Oh, that was uncomfortable. Might be our last. So I'm asking you one last time. Oh, that's I don't like that. It seems like. Oh my soul, I want this. 27 February 2024. 
This is a momentous time in Destiny history. We've been building to this moment for the last 10 years. The final shape is the conclusion to that journey. This is a moment in gaming that as a developer, you just don't get very often. Moments of are fighting the biggest <laughs> that the universe has ever seen. It's a culmination of the life and darkness. You mean both? <laughs> when we were thinking of what the oh, final shape could be, it had to be a lot of different things. It needs to pay off this epic confrontation with the witness that we've been setting up for years. It has to bring you closer to your allies in the vanguard. It has to be this place. I guess we're not going to TwitchCon now. <laughs> Wait, why? <laughs> Bro, I wish I could go to a Twitch we were resurrected by ghosts at the very beginning of this story. We didn't know why, but it was for this. The Traveler is asking oh. us for help, and it's our responsibility to protect every living thing in the universe from what the Witness intends to do. Oh, okay, okay, I hear you. Zek, I feel that, bro. Start the final shape. We are finally able to go through the portal that the Witness opened in the Traveler at the end of Lightfall. Inside is the pale heart of the traveler. That is the stage for our showdown with the witness. Bro, inside the heart of the traveler, that's what blows my mind. The darkness. It has always had a connection to it. The pale heart of the traveler is what it's trying to use to gain connection to the light. So with both, it can enact its final shape. The witness sees ah. a lack of purpose, no meaning. It wants to fix all that. So it's trying to put the universe into this frozen perfection where everything's just exactly how it thinks it's supposed to be. That is the final shape. You go into the traveler and you just see Kate dancing? Bro, I'm thinking, what if the traveler is somehow... It's going to take everyone. Failure is not an option. Well, hmm, nah. All our allies and all the guardians to rally together and be brave. In I love the armor that I'm seeing, if I'm being honest. Let's say, forget that. Let's go, dude. We're Let's going to go. Answer questions at the grandest scale. But what I find really interesting is that it's also. This much so welcome on in, bro. Welcome on in. Where we deepen our relationships with these characters that we've known for so long. Zavala. I That's what I was thinking as well. Get to reconnect with Cade Six. So, like, <laughs> while there's this great conflict and everything going on around us and stakes of just unimaginable heights. It's still at the end. Either that or what if, what if the guard, uh, the traveler who have been kind of together is, takes over Cade and uses Cade to speak and to, to communicate? What if that's the situation? I could be wrong, but... Bro, when do you start your, the, the next, next job? Tomorrow? In the final shape, we're going through the portal that the witness has opened up to confront it and stop the final shape. No worries, no worries, this motion. Thank you for the alert, bro. Vast, unknowable Edward landing on the Pale Heart, which is a fraction of really what is inside the Traveler. This is gonna be fucking wild. The Pale Heart is weird. At M? Oof, that's it's early. It's strange, it makes you feel a bit uncomfortable. True, and it true. Is also just so cool and artistic in the best way. Yo! The witness entered well ahead of any guardians. And so it's had time to kind of shape what's there. When our guardian enters. Sorry, the beach just called me. The pale heart starts getting shaped also around what we've experienced. This is the Yo. creating the world in front of you as it saw on your journey. Okay. One of the most memorable Blokalas from Destiny's past is the D1 Tower. It's really a labor of love from the Destiny team. The final shape means so much to everyone who's building it, and I think players are really going to be able to see that. I'm gonna fucking love that. The Pale Heart is our very first linear destination that we've ever done. That's oh, linear, like okay. Felt that they began their journey in a place of safety and feel it escalate in danger, in the realness because this is going to be wild is this beautiful evolution of the space they see things that are more and more wrong as they begin to go towards the witnesses monologue oh this is going to be fucking amazing dude thing off the, the weirdest things happen as you get closer to the monolith in the form of reshaping kind of like deconstructing things and putting them back together 
just wrong. The sense of scale you get out there, like as you're exploring oh, bro. reshaped cuboids of Earth, you feel tiny as a guardian. You feel alone. You feel like you are not the force to be reckoned with that you have been. You're not the god slayer right now. You're just this little person jumping from these massive pieces to massive pieces. What? Okay, this is gonna be wild. Really I'm excited. To also capture is that the witness keeps going the and so we're going to fight these new enemies, the subjugators. Subjugators are the uh, new you're facing in the final shape. They have an enhanced power set. They're performing stasis powers and strand powers to face the guardian. That's gonna They're suck. Support of all the other enemies you're fighting too. They bring something entirely new to the battlefield, which is Imagine being suspended and then frozen. They're back there pinging away with stasis abilities, throwing crystals at you, freezing you. So she getting my wallet. Tangling you up. Tormentor 2.0, bro. Right? Tormentors ain't nothing compared to those things. Looks like those things are gonna be a pain. The campaign, and only the campaign. It's the most important thing in the universe at that moment. You have to stop it happening. And yes. For that, we do yes. need the help with our allies. So we're going to make sure that the core Vanguard team gets back together. Zavala and I core. Viking. Campaign. Yeah. The campaign is just the start of the Pale Heart. After you've reached the monolith and finished the campaign. Oh, sorry. The entire My bad. Destination. And so the entire Pale Heart is going to react to you and what you are doing. <laughs> I get that when I'm playing with Zinx, Zinx and, and, and um, Archie quite a bit. The raids are where you defeat like the big What? So it's only natural that when you are going to confront the witness... It's because the mic's right here, man. <laughs> but that might not be enough. This is a moment where we need to rally all Guardians to be able to overcome the final shape and the witness. I can hear your beard. Yeah, you like that, don't you? <laughs> uh, the final shape, we are oh, look at the beard. Very close to this energy that beard. That allows us to have new super <laughs> void. We want to oh, bro. Something that turns you into an offensive powerhouse, but also can benefit your allies in the support capacity. There is- It would be a- no, 12 Guardian Ray would be amazing. And like working with your friends to overcome the odds. But where are you gonna find 12 people who's gonna be on at the same time? That's the- <gasps> That's the ultimate expression of solar energy coursing through your garden. The Solar Warlock Super is a callback to Radiance from D1. Other than Golden Gun, this is the only other first person super in Destiny right now. Your melees. <laughs> Like all these, these projectiles <laughs> when someone on, puts sound effects into that, you know, almost being sentient as it searches around and then it hits a character and bounces off and goes to another one. And you're so overflowing with this energy that you are also giving oh, your allies, allowing them to have their solar weapons supercharged, applying scorch when they're shooting. The new solar warlock aspect when I cast my rift. It is going to create this little solar soul. That, that guy's excited about it, bro. Enemy, it launches part of itself out and hits the enemy and explodes and scorches them. It just feels very alive. He's like, you know, the sound effects, bro. Arsenal. <laughs> it's oh, yes. Layered super. This is the only ranged one-off offensive super for Titans in the game. The Titan jumps up into the air, summons this giant void axe, throws it, summons another one, throws it, summons another one, looks at a different group of enemies, throws it. And when these axes fly through the air, they stick into the ground or an enemy, do their void gravity thing where they suck a bunch of energy and enemies in and then explode. But that doesn't destroy the axe. The axe sticks around and you and your allies can go and pick up that axe and start wailing on enemies. <laughs> Let's fucking go! Aspect. I press and hold my grenade button to consume my grenade and turn it into a shield. The more damage Bro. The more Wait. Up, and I can that and it creates this blast that deals massive damage. When they're like, 
The Titan has this attack where he's got. I'm like, they're screwing us. Arc is all about finding the shortest distance. The hunter kind of rears back, takes this knife and throws it. Same. And then is able to blink to its position, do the decimate anyone nearby. One really great thing about that is not just you do it once. Yo, this is Super Point 3.0, bro. Super Point 4 4.0. The hunter oh. is an aspect. We take our staff, we twirl it in the air, which propels us upward. It creates this burst, which amplifies you <laughs> and any allies. It almost makes it feel like you're playing a fighting game, right? Like these combos that you're chaining together to do these different moves. It, it like takes that. Oh that shit, the dude! The more aspects we have, the more capable we are to do that. It feels but that's like axe throw, like, though. That instantaneous, like. That was good. But was like, I love this guy's sound effects. I love. Okay, both these guys are champions. Making sound effects like that, that's how you know you're in it, bro. Oh, but that axe, though. Weapon team has been working on all sorts of goodness. We've got exotics, we've got legendaries, we've got perks. We're always cooking up stuff. We're always playing with stuff that we think is, like, really interesting or taking inspiration. We have Rifle. They did. Oh. The really of adapting your guardian's current damage type. This will be the first time. That's fucking cool. You can adapt to be strand or stasis in the energy slot, so you'll be able to run an entirely strand or entirely stasis loadout. Tessellation has the additional property that you can special reload to uh, reshape your grenade. And I want to pre-order so bad, dude. And then fire out a super destructive single projectile. It's a really special weapon. What's the one specific exotic that I can make that's like really zany that you would like right now? What if Bro? that was a sniper rifle? What if you could harness the, the might of the Traveler? You know, we had a moment where we saw that Traveler Beam cutscene. I know people on weapons went, I kind of want that. You're like, that is incredibly <laughs> This <dope."> is sick. <sighs> opportunity to bring back these iconic Destiny 1 weapons, but really turn it into something that feels unique in Destiny 2. We have to bring Kvastav into the fold. Bro. Red Death exotic pulse rifle. And Dragon's Breath. Anybody know if someone wants to buy a kidney? I'm joking. <laughs> I can't and sell my kidneys. Shape, we have new weapon subfamilies coming, broadening what existing weapons can be. Really, like, bordering on exotic functionality. So, for example, we've got... Oh, dude, this is going to be nuts. Pistol, ...sidearm subfamily. We always like... To PvP about to suck. Sidearms. This fires tiny slow moving rockets they hit very hard do a bit of aoe damage they have a mixture of <laughs> bro that's nuts you only need one true true port frame auto rifle is a type of legendary <laughs> auto rifle it'll let you switch seamlessly from firing at enemies to healing your allies i'm really excited to bro. bring a few dungeons and keep my team alive honestly bro weapons team is always coming up with new ideas we've got a ton of new cool stuff coming over the next few years and some new and really wild ideas which we're pretty excited about dude okay okay fuck february we need the load off you've got a lot to cover we we need we need february here like now this dude this is only big enough for one dashing hero type and that's me so i'm back let's go hey you two give me a sec I was magnificent. That was cool. That was the coolest moment I remember of Cade. This is great. You don't want to hug? <laughs> it was an emotional support rifle. Fuck off my map. Worst case scenario, you die. But who knows? Maybe you won't. Bro, I love that Cade's coming back. Yeah! Ayo, the supers, though. Well, get back to it. Yeah, definitely. In this moment where we're driving to the end of the Light and Darkness saga, it's great to see Cade like return to this world at this moment with all the. I mean, makes sense. About to culminate with this confrontation with the the long-standing enemy, the Witness. Cade is the quintessential hunter. His presence casts such a long shadow over the story of Destiny, whether it was when he was alive or when he was dead what Cade goes through mm -hmm. in this journey, how he serves as a catalyst for the other characters. Oh. That are uncovered to have brought him back. This is how the story had to end. There was no end. Bro, the I'm, I'm still in awe. I'm still stuck on the supers. Alongside his friends to finish the job.
Yeah, it would have felt empty without him. Digging into the nature of the pale heart. I think that crystallized Cade's role as a guide. Cade is Virgil, and he's our guide through this other place. Cade is the one who is the most appropriate person to be the guide, because that's his job. That's always been his job. You get his, yeah, he does. Natural for Nathan to be back in the booth. It felt amazing to just see him slip back into the role, like, without missing a beat. Right, instantly. In the flesh. Or metal, as it were. Cade's the glue that's always held Zavala and Ikora up together. Having him back puts them in a position of questioning where they've been and what they've done without him. You think about the journey that Zavala's been on and how he's been taken down this dark path, and you think about the way Ikora having to hold the vanguard together, having Cade's voice of levity and brightness that he brings uh, to that group, that I think is going to be great for them. Well. At least we have each other. We want people to take away that. Yes, it's that, him. That idea of like. It's Nathan Fillion. Back together mm -hmm. for this moment. I'm here now. Wherever the hell here is. Bro. Oh, this is going to be amazing. That armor looking bomb, though. Oh yeah, definitely. Guardian, the witness poses a dire threat. Bruh. And the witch queen holds the answers we seek, but only if we contend with her sister, Zivu Arath. Yes. With me, will you come back from this? Do not be afraid. Wait, what? Now wield hive magic and have entwined it with your light. Assault the spire, guardian. That was Eris. the way to our tithes. <laughs> we get to use the mods. The deck, and they do. I'm not sleeping tonight. Sadly, I have load shedding. Season of the Witch. There. Now we know what Redacted is. Season of the Witch is our opportunity as players. We've been annihilating and breaking hive spells. And now we're going to stay <laughs> At the end of Season of the Deep, we learn that Sabathun has the key to getting into the portal that we need to go into. That means we have to go find Imaru, her ghost. Imaru's like, not so bad. That's right, so evil, huh? Bigger problem for and that bigger problem's name... It looks like... If maybe, maybe not, we don't know. ...only get stronger, Eris has an idea. It's a really... It's a really good It's idea. a wild-ass idea. Yeah. I think Eris is going to be on our side. That's why we can... The best way to fight fire is with fire. Yes, that's why we can wield the power of the hive. All of that energy that we're creating by going through, by eliminating enemies, and we're tithing to our friend Eris. Bring me your tithes. What does that mean for the characters and the player? Like, Yo. Like Sabathun. And that's where we went down the path of having Hive Eris. We want to extend that magical fantasy into the player then. That ability to have overwhelming magical power, that risk and reward into all of our activities and systems experiences. And so that's what led us to come up with things like Deck of Whispers. It's this magical deck of cards that creates amazing- Card of many things. Build craft meta and with buffs and activities. 
and they can then use these cards at will with the ones they want, and then that really leans into the build crafting. You actually are getting cards that you can then use to the place on the battlefield and change the way you play. I'm such a sucker for deck building. Like being able to like bring that element into Destiny. I'm fucked. Has just been like, oh, chess. Yeah, oh, it's really fun. Possibly, yeah. It seems like. So we've got two brand new seasonal activities coming with Season of the Witch. Okay. Altars of Summoning and Sabbathine Spire. Sabbathine Spire is our new three-player offensive. You're doing a lot more with Lucent Hive magic, but it's got a high amount of combatant density. It's got Let's go. random encounters that you can come across. The Grab a new Spire pencil. Itself, Sabbathine Spire was like her reliquary for all of these different magical experiments as she was learning the light. You're there in order to learn as much as you can in order to become a master spellcaster, right? To become like Sabathun. Oh, it's gonna be wild. This activity is really exciting because you can spend like 20 minutes in it or you can spend two hours in it. It's a three player experience that you can hop in and hop out of. As you're going through this activity, you're filling the tithing bucket. As that tithing bucket okay. is filled up, you'll get progressively more rewards. And then finally at the end, it'll cash out and you'll get a whole mess of rewards. Oh, shit. We really wanted to make sure that there was a home for any exotic mission content coming in season. Yeah, do I hear uh, after the year has passed. And so we developed what we're calling the exotic mission rotator. Right away, we're getting Presage, Vox Obscura, and Operation Seraph Shield. This is some of the most fun content the team has making. It's some of the content the fans have- More missions coming, okay. The most exciting thing outside of just the missions themselves is that every time we put a mission inside of that rotator, the exotic that comes alongside of it will become craftable. You guys, my destiny updated already? The Witch, we have a brand new Vex uh, lo-fi PvP map coming. It's really exciting. It's got a bunch of uh, really tight gameplay experiences. We wanted to make sure that we focus the combat a little bit more with the new well, maybe. map. We really wanted maybe to maybe actually to like hey, you're shoulder to shoulder more often. There's not as much deep sight lines that you're interacting with, and a lot of the flow of the map is actually built around this like kind of simple. <laughs> there's me. The <laughs> that you're, you're, you're featured. Around. And there's also some modes coming too, right? We've got a new PvP game mode coming. That's <laughs> all about race. It's about that's race. very so true. One like the Scorch game mode from the past. So we've got the shield coming from Vault of Glass. We've got the spear back. From Ayo. The we got the scythe from Season of the Haunted. Yeah. So you're gonna be reaping guardians with that thing. It's a lot more tactical gameplay. This is it's scythe. All about running around the map claiming these relic dispensers and then grabbing them in order oh. to push for victory. I will take one. Master Robots by Metallica sung by No, I haven't. I've listened to some of the AI things and they kind of disturbed me, but I'll check that one out actually. We were feeling pretty high. Yeah, I did. Obviously, there's something in the air. And so when thinking about like, what's a good raid reprisal that would really suit uh, this very high V season? There's only one answer. Let's see if you're right, Isaac. Raid reprisal. What's in? Oh, please do, please do. I have seen what the hive call a god. Greta's end. I only wish you were Earth weren't be reduced to a seasonal boss. True. Is it me a share? I bet. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bro, this looks like it's gonna be wild. We get to do it now, bro. Oh man, imagine. Oh fuck, I want that ring. I'm gonna go as a boss here. Heading into the final shape, we really want to rally all guardians at the end of the light. Bro, where's my update? We want to reduce those power barriers as well as catch people up on key story beats and make sure that they have a really great and easy time connecting with other players. 
<laughs> we're introducing proximity voice. Oh, fuck. Ways to make power more simple and easy to understand. Okay. Powering the barrier to entry is going to make it easier for players who have not been able to jump into game easily because they were held back by the challenges in grinding for the power levels that are required. Yeah. One of the major changes that's going to be happening starting with the final shape is there are going to be a certain number of activities that are going to be power fixed. So it doesn't matter kind of what power level you are going into it, you're always going to be able to approach it. There's still okay. going to be tiers of difficulty that you can do. Things that are just meant to be experienced a certain way. Things like nightfall strikes that will still have power. In okay. And that's where we're really going to focus the whole power climb. The raids, the contest modes that everybody loves to engage with, that experience is fundamentally going to be staying the same. I'm excited for this because I think there will be a lot more clarity for players in terms of understanding the relative difficulty of things, where they sit now in the spectrum. Yeah. One way that we're trying to do that is making it easier for new players to engage with you. So we're introducing something that we're calling fire team power. You can actually bring your friends along to play any dungeons and raids in the game without having to wait them to be at a certain power level. Okay. The person with the highest power in your fire team is actually going to bring all the others close to their power level, which means that there's no barriers really for Yo. any other guardian to join you in this high level. Did you see that? Combined with fire team finder, 19,000. 2,000. Before and have that same experience. That's all regardless of the power level of you and the rest of the people in your fire team. Fire team finder is the new feature that's coming in season 23, aimed at helping connect and find other people to complete the best and most aspirational content in Destiny. We have a tag system that allows players to be able to say well this is my play style i'm really chill i'm anti-sweat i'm just really anti-sweat <laughs> exactly tag really allows players to feel a little bit more personality feel a little bit more about what they're about what's really great about it is with the uh, yo, hold up. we're also looking at including inclusion tags as an example one of the inclusion tags that we have are for colorblind players hopefully the inclusion tags will bring players closer to finding their community and, and even closer to the people that they're yeah playing. that's so weird a listing goes live players will be put into a listing lobby where players that's got an emblem i was like what they can communicate with each other so i didn't even know there were drops as convenient and as easy as possible for players to not just sit and stare at a screen for a long time while their listing actually builds up as a gamer who's typically mm. more solo i'm especially excited about this because it really is about helping reduce that that's a good looking one really that comes okay trying to make a new connection I didn't even see it, I was just like, claim, I'm more here. Meaning we can now, oh man, this is fucking amazing. Today that I'm incredibly excited about is Timeline Reflections. Essentially what we have done is we went back to previous expansions and pulled out missions that we felt really represent key narrative beats. That's cool. We have a mission for Forsaken, mission for Beyond Light, as well as a mission for Witch Queen. Thanks for the memories, Guardian. The neat thing about these missions is they're not going to be, gonna be free to play for how you would experience them in the campaign. You're also going to get additional pieces of narrative fed to you to like identify like, hey, this is why it's important that this happened. And here are the people you met along the way. So even if you don't have all the DLCs, you can still experience things. Is Cade's last stand from Forsaken. Oh, melted. That a lot of players, new and old, are going to come back to Destiny. I think this is just the right time to introduce features that are going to allow those players to jump right in. Sub Rogerson, hey, Dean, thank you for the lurk, bro. Appreciate it. Regardless of their power level. I ain't sleeping tonight, bro. <laughs> Fuck! We're reaching the end of this this 10 year journey. What comes next? The episodes. <laughs> and the new way we're going to tell stories moving forward. What's really important about episodes is that it's a really big shakeup to what we've been doing. Oh Instead my of word. Providing four seasons a year, you are going to get three larger episodes. And so the first three episodes in this coming year are called Echoes, Revenant, and Heresy. It's coming right after the final shape. And the theme for the year is going to be all about the consequences and aftermath of the final shape. I think which I'm thinking stone of the episode model that we're building is the three hear me out. I think Ares Morn is going to become the big bad after the final shape. Introduce new weapons, new artifacts, or we can have to fight Ares Morn at some point. There's going to be new missions coming around the core. There'll be new story moments in every single one of these acts. We're actually providing 
more cinematic styled experiences throughout the final shape year and the episodes with it than any of the seasons we've ever developed before. These new stories Yo. are actually playable as standalone. Like each episode is something you can experience. Looks like very extensive scoring. Yeah. Years, or this is your first one. You're going to be able to basically enjoy them in any order you want to. I think the opportunity with this big epic moment is that we get to innovate the game. We get to move the game forward. It's all about change frequently. It's all about deeper story moments. It's all about more weapons, more loot, more often. And it really provides the team with a platform to go much deeper into the themes and fantasies and story of any individual episode as compared to the seasons you know of today. I'm so excited to see what the narrative team can mm, do. What is that? Storytelling. Episodes provides this awesome scorn for the future of Destiny. We're moving into the next stage of Destiny 2. I think some people have and they think Destiny 2 is coming to the end. And in many ways, it's the opposite. We're leaning in. We're putting the pedal to the metal. Episodes provide us a new, innovative way for players to engage with Destiny 2 throughout the year. Yeah, Vex and I are fun. Scorn are kind of, eh, they're okay. What makes a guardian a guardian? Devotion, bravery, sacrifice. See if she doesn't die before. Oh, true, true. By something greater than ourselves. Elon Musk. <laughs> Shaped by the fires of each new battle. I think so, yeah. We are forged and sharpened into what we must become for the fight ahead. We are the final line that halts the second collapse. All of us. Every Titan. Every warlock. Every hunter. Hey, why are you gonna put hunters last? Shame. Devotion inspires bravery. Bravery inspires sacrifice. Sacrifice. You have us to thank for Elon. True. True. The line between light and dark is so very thin. South Africa's most valuable export. Cross it together. There are things out in the dark that only the dark can overcome. Bro, whipped the stories of the traveler's sacrifice of darkness descending upon humanity. Oh, my soul, dude. So no new subclass, but more to light subclasses. I'm fine. Yeah. This time, there is no escape. Bro, I was going into this just going, cool, we're getting Kate back. <laughs> Yo. It's going to be an exciting year for Guardians. We get to make good on a promise that we made way back in 2014. There was classic rock blasting, fire team racing across our solar system. And at the end, a simple message. Become legend. Today, you got a glimpse at how we'll be cementing your legend in this upcoming year. We're gonna be heading inside the traveler, experiencing a destination unlike anything we've ever built before. We'll face the biggest bag we've ever made, and we'll do this all alongside those axes progression system. Allowing us to easily play oh, it's gonna be wild. friends in any content in the game. And as the dust settles in the final shape, we're gonna continue our legends in Echoes. It's Destiny's first episode in a new phase of storytelling for Guardians with brand new conflicts born from the resolution of the Light and Darkness saga. These first episodes are just the beginning. Uh -huh. But if you're chomping at the bit, to see how the light and darkness saga is going to kick off the future of Destiny 2. We've got a ton Wait, my mask, sir. Really Bro, so guys, this, all of the hype in chat. Lucia, let's go, dude. Let's new weapons, go. New armor, new Congratulations, new dude. PvP content, all That's fucking awesome. Catch -up missions. When do you start? When do you start? To jump into the game and get up to speed on what's happening in the Bro. Game. Then, next week, Bro, reprisal of Crota's end is going to join the ranks of our aspirational content. 
Let's go, dude. That is fucking awesome. As we learn more about the final phase and how we can stop that. Dude. Legendary. Start on Monday. Bro. And it's the one you wanted, yeah? Bro, I am so happy for you, dude. That is awesome. That is such fucking good news, bro. Like, I was holding thumbs. I'm like, come on, man. Come on. Celebration, bro. This fight might be our last. So I'm asking you to rise. One last time. Guys, can we get can we get some hype in chat for Blue Shell, please? Bro, congratulations. That is fucking amazing, dude. Oh no, there's a collector's edition. <sighs> this is gonna be bad. When we create a collector's edition, we try and recreate items from the universe for players to enjoy outside of the game. So this year we're doing a Destiny 1 tower. We really try to work hard at thinking about 10 years of Destiny and how best to encapsulate that experience. Even as the game dev who've you know, worked on it since day one, like I think having it be the tower is super exciting for us because it's going to kind of catalog your journey of a player from when you first started playing destiny all the way to now the tower it's kind of like the beacon in which you're one second guys home. you get the tower and then there are actual figures of the vanguard mentors that accompany that architectural model and there's a lot of like hidden messages and hidden things. There's uh, gonna be some fun surprises. We're always trying to push the envelope. And so we've been playing a lot with magnetic locks and uh, sound effects yeah. and lights. Just sort of make this experience as a whole yeah. um, really special. It's sort of the perfect symbol of Destiny. I'm so excited for it. <laughs> Me too.